Hi there, thanks for taking the time. In this video, I'll uh, redo my talk from Budapest BI Forum uh, 2022. It's about Python data apps running in the browser. So in this talk, I'll talk about Python data apps running in the browser. What you need to know is that data apps enables you and your team to make data and models interactive. It enables you to automate stuff to uh, leverage the power of Python and all its uh, packages. In this talk, I will introduce you to Panel, which I believe is awesome, and I'll show you how easy you can now share your data app with the world, no server required. A little bit about me, I'm Max Gård Madsen. I have a background as a PhD in math, and uh, I'm a chartered financial analyst. I'm an expert in data models and analytics within finance and energy. Uh, it's my professional passion, and I have a long, uh, I have a, I have a lot of uh, experience in that domain. Here, I'm actually expressing my own views in my own time. Um, yeah, most of my working hours goes for Ørsted. So Ørsted is the world leader in offshore wind and has an aspiration to become a global renewable energy major. So you can think about it as the BP or Shell, but just of renewable energy. And we are going global and hiring. And if you are opening this uh, data app here, you can actually check out Ørsted. There's a link here to the Ørsted webpage where you can read more about Ørsted. So I have made a presentation as a data app here, and we will go through the pages. But let's just rump, jump right into it instead. Let's take up some of these uh, Easter eggs that I have here. So these are examples of data apps. Let's just open them up. So now they're loading and you can see there are different types of applications here. One is just about yeah, KPIs or streaming data here. One is about time series analysis and another one is about streaming video. So data visualization is not just about visualizing tabular data, but it could be streaming data coming in like here, or it could be analyzing time series like this using some kind of algorithm. Here we're using the awesome Stumpa, Stumpy algorithm to find patterns, repeating patterns in the data. So here we can see there's one pattern that we find very similarly over here, and we can that's an algorithm that gives us that. And we can find those patterns in a lot of places. You can see this pattern is sort of repeating over here. It would be difficult to see with your own eye. And just for fun of it, we can sort of play through, follow along here and see where the patterns are. Again, that would maybe give us an idea on how things are repeating. And one thing you'll notice is also the, the speed here, that it's quite speedy. And that's because we're actually running in the browser. I don't have a server in the background. Everything we are running is just running in this uh, browser. So when we opened up this application, it uh, it just downloads uh, Python and all the packages. And it's no problem. There's no uh, security uh, problems or anything with it. It's just contained and running in the secure environment of the browser. We can take up this uh, video stream. Let's just uh, maximize it a little bit. So this is also a data app. It's a little bit blurred, and that's because we're actually using a Python uh, algorithm to blur it a little bit. We can blur it even more or less, like this. So high out there. And we can apply other algorithms. But before we do that, you can see it's a bit laggy. But we can actually speed that up, because now we're just running in the browser. So it's just really smooth. That's nice. And we can use a grayscale algorithm or some Sobel algorithm, again, hi. And we can also do a face detection. And all of this is very speedy. Like we are updating every 10 milliseconds here, for example. And again, this is an, a data app I've made with Python and the framework panel that I will be talking about. So that was one Easter egg. The other Easter egg is really about like sharing, how fast you can now share uh, applications. 
So now we go to my website, awesomepanel.org, which is all about panel and data apps. And here we go into the sharing gallery. In here, you can actually find my talk. Let's just open it up. So you can click all of these. And if you do, right, you can click the to open the app or you can click to open the, the editor with the code, actually. So if you want to take a look at the code, then click this small icon down here. And here you can see that different people have contributed applications already in here. So let's just check out, this is my, my presentation. Let's open. And the way you can also contribute your app is really easy. You go here to awesomepanel.org and go to the sharing service. And then it opens up. What you will see is an editor with code. You can put in your own code and then you can convert it and get an application over here. And in the end, you can actually share it over here. So let's try it. Let's take my, my presentation. This is my presentation. So it's a lot of code. Now I'm just putting it in. We, it's, it's some code. You can see 300 lines of code. That's, uh, that's actually a lot of code for Python. So now you actually can see I've built it. It's running over here, just in the browser, into installing packages. If I go over here, I can log into GitHub. So let's just do that. And that will enable me to start sharing. So here I could start share this again as Budapest BI 2022. Call, let's call it test and share it. So now it's, it's working. You can see up here it's working. And yeah, it's released. And now I could copy a link or I could open it or I could download. So downloading, I just did that, will give you a zip file with all the source and, and target build files. But uh, we could also open it. Let's just do that. So now it's just opening. And we could take this link and share it on Twitter or LinkedIn or send it on an email or something. One thing you also could note if you don't want to share the application itself, with the world is that if you're writing a small data application with panel, like just a hello world application, let's just convert it. So whenever you convert it up here, you will actually see you get a unique URL here, a very long URL. You can take that URL and again, you can share it, for example, on Stack Overflow or Discourse site or something like that wherever you want to share it. And the people who access this unique URL, they will be able to go back and find the code and see the app. And actually all the code is encoded in this long URL. So it's not because I'm storing on the server this uh, code, your application, it's just embedded in this long URL. So it's a way to, to share your uh, applications. Please note that the code will live on my server for a short period of time while you're working in here, but the intent is not to, to keep it around. If you need examples to inspire you, you can pick an example over here. So again, this is a data app just running in the browser. You can see the code over here. And this is a, a conference about BI. So it's a lot about Power BI and Tableau and so on. And one of the powers of Tableau, for example, is easy cross filtering and we have the same here with panel and it's holoviews ecosystem holoviews ecosystem that it's really easy like you just define a few plots that's what we do here a scatter and a histogram and then you say you want to link them like add the cross filtering and you say the scatter should be linked and the hist should be linked so that's what you do here and this is all it takes to get a nice dashboard up and running with uh, cross-filtering cross and everything. So that's, yeah, a little bit about how easy it is now. Uh, and we will see these uh, sharing services uh, pop up, I'm pretty sure, because before we could share Python as code, but we could not really share it a lot and easily in this, nearly as easy as this, um, with uh, live applications as well. So that's 
yeah, actually everything I wanted to show you in a way. I just wanted to show you the power of Python, the power of being able to do data apps, a little bit about panel and that you yeah, can easily share. But uh, now we'll dig a little bit more into the details. We'll start all over from the beginning. I'll assume you come from a background where you know about Power BI and Tableau and you might have heard about Python, but you're not maybe so much into Python. Why should you listen to this talk? Why is Python important? Well, Python is important because it's uh, popular. It's uh, really, really popular. It is the world's most popular programming language for the, over the last two years. And you can see it's become the most popular programming language over the last uh, five to six years because it's so popular in data science and machine learning and so on. It's important to know about Python because it can give you a lot of superpowers via all the Python packages that are available. There are more than 400,000 Python packages available. So if you're a financial analyst, you can find a lot of packages that could help you. If you're a chemist, you can find similar package. If you're a trader, you can find trade, trader packages. If you're some kind of uh, engineer, then you can find packages and so on. Or if you're just into database, you can find a lot of packages. So let me just show you another power of Python that's readability. So if you want to define a simple function, this is a function, you can read it. It's called sum and it takes two arguments A and B and it returns the result as the sum of A and B. And what you can do with panel is you can add panel to the mix, define some widgets. So the widgets are the two you see over here and then you can lay them out in a column and you can bind, that's what you can do, the function, so the sum function to the widgets A and B. And then you get a nice little application like this. And then you can say, ah, but that's not so much, but actually it could be a lot. Like if, the, if your algorithm, if your function was a little bit more complicated, then it's actually a superpower to be able to interactively, actually, actively inspect the function and maybe optimize the parameters and so on. And it doesn't stop here because right now we're just returning integers, but actually panel works with most of Python's objects. So for example, if you're using a plotting library, for example, matplotlib, plotly or bokeh, if you return one of their figure objects, then panel will know how to display that in a column. And then you could have a, a plot uh, that updates here. And that's actually what I want to show you in the next example. So let's take the code. So here the code is very similar to before. Uh, we have the widget still, but here the function, we call the function plot. And this time it just returns a plot instead. We're using hvplot because hvplot is a really simple to use and very, very powerful plotting library. Um, so it just returns an hvplot here. And you can see the data in the data frame here depends on A and B. So if we drag this slider, you can see the plot is updating like this and again my presentation here is just running in the in the browser i don't have a server in the background everything is just installed here python is installed here panel is installed here uh, pandas and hvplot is installed in th inside the browser it's really easy yes so back to um, database python has a huge database ecosystem and one mantra of panel is really that panel works with the tools you know and love. So if you have a love to one of Python's many data visualization libraries, it works with panel. For example, matplotlib, plotly or bokeh, altair, data shader for visualizing millions or billions of points um, and so on. And I just want to show you that visualization can also be very interactive. Let's just take hvplot and holoviews because they are part of the ecosystem that panel is a part of. So hvplot is the entry point to plotting. It's really simple to use. If you go to my site, awesomepanel.org and want to see the code, you can just click the code icon and then you can see how simple it is to create a plot like this. So here's the code. Um, yes. So this is holoviews. So it's a lower level below hvplot, but it can give you superpowers. For example, 
you can make your plot interactive here. So for example, you might have, want, have a user who wants to interactively define a curve. They can do that. You get the data out, you can save it in your database or download it to a file. And Holoviews provides a lot of tools, uh, not just for, you could say, traditional plots, but also if you have images, you can add annotations, for example, if you want to say, here's a person or here's a, here's a lemon or something like that, then you can annotate the, the image as well, using a lot of tools that it has. So check out my site and check out Holoviews as well. So that's a lot about Python's database. There is a lot. And they're super powerful. And on top of that, you can make data applications, for example, with panel. So again, if you go to my site and look at the full gallery, you can get a lot of inspiration, right? For example, if you're into machine learning, you can see how you can detect objects in images. You can see how you can create classic dashboards and you can learn how to get started with panel, for example. And you can also build bigger applications like this volume profile analysis, for example. Let's just check that out. And one thing that it has also is a really nice uh, table. So let's check, take up tabulator, right? And my domain tables are just really, really important. And we have good looking tables that just works and are yeah, very performant and you can make them interactive. You can see here I'm selecting rows and we get the selection back and so on. Back to the volume profile analysis. It's about uh, my co uh, company, Oster, some financial data, price data and volume data for that. And you can see you can make nice uh, candlestick plots like these. Let's just reset it. And you could also analyze the data by looking at the distribution, for example, using some of Python's powerful libraries, for example, the SciPy um, package. And here you can interact with the data, figuring out what's the best way to yeah, look at this data. You can add uh, more information, for example, to, to look at the peaks, how high and how wide are they. So you can build custom tools. Again, data apps is not about building big, big applications that could sort of be the new uh, Twitter of DataViz or something like that, right? It's about building tools for yourself, for your colleagues, for your team, your department, for your, your company and so on, or for your organization or for the science domain you're in or something like that. I've been talking about panel. I believe it's awesome. If you don't know about panel, it's a Python framework for data apps, data visualization. It has uh, 600,000 downloads a month, two and a half thousand stars on GitHub. It's a part of this ecosystem where you should start with panel for dashboarding and HVPlot for visualization. And then if you need more, for example, geogra geographical visualization, you go to GeoViews. If you need to visualize uh, big data, like millions or billions of points, you use data shader and so on. And these uh, frameworks are open source and free. They are uh, backed or sponsored by, for example, Anaconda. A lot of the contributors work at Anaconda and Blackstone. Blackstone uses uh, panel a lot and is also a sponsor. And over here you can see this is a, a small video of a blog post I wrote about why I believe panel is so awesome. And yeah, you should read it because there's a lot of information and a lot of this in there. So I hope you'll find it nice. Um, but what I would say, it's not only about the end user experience, but it's also about the developer experience. It's simple and performant that you can develop in your favorite editor or IDE. And when you save your Python file, you can just see the re the changes or the results um, immediately. So it's really, really nice. And I prefer work, working in VS Code. Some people prefer working in PyCharm and some people prefer notebooks. And the power of Panel is really that it works in all these environments because there are alternative frameworks, but they don't work uh, across environments nearly as, as well as uh, Panel does. So that's one of the key strengths that if you are a team, 
if you have different uh, preferences, then you can actually work together in this framework. So check out this blog post. Uh, also, if you are getting started, if you have questions, if you want to showcase what you have, you can go here to the, our discourse site, holovis.org, and you can showcase just as I've done. So this is uh, iPyVisu for uh, telling interactive uh, stories about data. You can use that with panel, of course. And a lot of people go here to ask questions and interact and share knowledge and so on. So we have a very active uh, community side. And don't wait, wait until you are an expert. Please go there uh, as a beginner because you will get so much knowledge, so much help in there. And also it will help uh, develop this uh, framework that we get your questions. Okay, so this is all nice and easy. We can develop, we can explore and so on, but then going to production sharing with the world right that's where the difficulty is that's a lot when people say that data science machine learning it's so hard to get it to production um, it might be hard because you need to scale like facebook does right so it requires a lot of infrastructure and so on network whatever but in my case where it's more about few people uh, smaller teams smaller companies and so on then it's also difficult because you might not have the access to a server. You might not have the knowledge to deploy and so on. So th those are pains. And that's how it was yesterday that you needed a server, you needed to understand DevOps or buy an enterprise platform from Plotly Desk, for example, or your database is slow because of latency, because you need to send data to a server in Amsterdam and, and uh, back to the client, which could be in Budapest or Copenhagen. And also, if you want to create tools for users that might have confidential data, then uh, the server client architecture can sometimes be, be a problem. If, for example, you want to provide a tool to somebody who has data about children that they are caring for, for, they might not want to share that data, but still they might want to have a tool to, to uh, uh, reorganize that data to extract uh, insights and so so on. Now you can provide tools for those use cases because Python can be run in the in the browser as well, and it can be um, the good like you could also before, but then you needed to know JavaScript and or TypeScript and or something like that. And that's normally for like professional front end developers, but Python is really for the domain expert. So a community of people caring for children, they can build stuff together and share it uh, now. So there was a demo before, a talk before by uh, Valerio from Anaconda, and he uh, talked about PyScript, and you can click here to go and see the examples. One of the challenges currently of PyScript is that it takes time to load, and it also takes some knowledge of HTML and JavaScript and CSS to, to get a nice template up and running so that things look nice. But if you stay in panel, and now you can with panel convert, then you don't have to care about that HTML, JavaScript, and CSS because you can just write your panel application in Python as you know it. So this is an example of some machine learning code using XGBoost and there's no HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Then you just convert your script to Pyodite and then you get a nice application like this that you can share on GitHub pages S3, Azure, Bob Storage, or somewhere else inside your organization. So that's panel convert. And then we have uh, panel sharing, as we saw in the beginning. It's now really easy to, for example, upload some code, convert it, get an application out, copy the long URL, or just log in and share your application with the world. So yeah, now you can copy, you can copy to Twitter and share this application with the world. Yes. 
So now we have the application here, it's coming. And this is just Matplotlib, it's a simple data app. Um, and that's, that's actually all. The final thing to say is you should check out my site, awesomepanel.org. So check it out. You can find a lot of information here about data apps. Check out if it's something for you. At least it's something for me. You can check out the sharing gallery and you can also start sharing if you want data apps. So in the sharing gallery, you can find my talk, this talk that I've been giving here about Budapest BI. And you can also go and share your data app here. So um, again, thanks.